here with Alex. He is booked out to get the additional damage. I actually got really lucky with his books to where we only had a few left over. So we're missing 5% on his A1. Skill cooldown on the A2, skill cooldown on the A3. So we're still getting this additional 20% damage and 15% damage. No matter what else we say in the rest of this video, just know this, that if you are a free-to-play player, if you're new to Raid Shadow Legends and you've never seen me before, use this guy. This guy has an accuracy lead. That's what he's there for, to give you this accuracy. It's very important in this game to land your debuff. So if you picked Kale or Kalel, however they say his name, in the beginning to get those poisons up, along with this accuracy lead, and then anyone else that you play, you're going to be using this guy into mid-game until you get good accuracy all over your account. It's great that he has a 50% chance to freeze on his A1 AoE decrease defense. If you don't book him out, just make sure you get the Sniper Mastery 5% additional chance to apply a debuff, and you'll be at an 80% chance to apply it. So on a four turn cooldown, 80% chance to apply decreased defense, freeze on the A1, big hit here, but remove a buff is what it's all about. It is a pretty strong hit. We're going to talk about his multipliers in a minute. I'm going to run him through a dungeon. You're going to see everything this guy can do. We're going to talk all about the craziness of slapping around and doing mass amount of damage, but removing a buff is really good. There are times when removing a buff is really necessary. And this guy can do it on a five turn or a four turn cooldown. All this stuff about orcs and ogren tribes, we don't really care. That's just a cherry on top. But the rest of this, play this champion, use this champion, and always have them as your lead. Let's go into masteries first, and then we'll talk about artifacts and multipliers. I've got him down here with Helm Smasher, so sometimes you're going to see him do some pretty big hits. He's going to ignore almost all of defense with the Savage set we have on, so it's going to be a pretty large one. And then we've got other things in here just to add up our damage, the standard stuff that we put in here to get additional damage. Then we've got a support over here for his debuffs, make those last longer. And then Evil Eye to knock down the turn meter, get increased accuracy from these. So we have critical damage, increase attack, increase attack, critical damage, increase attack with a lot of attack there. And then we actually have an attack banner with lots of, no, a little bit of attack, speed, but we have enough accuracy down here. You can see at the bottom his total stats of 156 accuracy plus his 60 from his accuracy lead. So we're good with all the 20 dungeons, 21, 22, all the way up to 25. We are set to get these debuffs up. And we've got attack of 6,275, critical damage of 278, and of course, 100% chance to crit. Now I do want you to take note of this gear and this critical damage and attack. And you look at his attack here of 1,432. We're gonna talk about multipliers in a minute, but just remember this gear that he has on is superior to Dark Kale's gear. Dark Kale has this gear on, same, same sets. He's only at 5,364, 249 critical damage, so much lower overall, and Kale's attack is 1,343. So everything is lower. And I want to know if you can tell the difference. Now, when one of them, either one of them does a Helm Smasher hit, it's going to be much bigger than the other hit if they don't Helm Smasher at the same time. That will be a difference, but we're just going to pay attention and see if we can really noticeably see a difference. Now, every single one of my YouTube videos on the bottom, you can go over and check out this web page and you'll be able to see the multipliers. This is inside every single, you might have to hit see more. But you always have the multipliers and you always have the information about the Doom Tower bosses and the waves, all their HP, speed, resistance, and accuracy. So if you look up Alex right here, you can see that his A1 is at 3.7. That is super standard for anybody's basic ability. It's either 3.5 to 4. Somewhere around there, he's at 3.7. And you can see the calculated damage. His AoE ability is at 4.2. Now, I've heard that this is old information. So if you look at Raid Shadow Legends Helper, you'll be able to see the new updated information. So if this is moved to 4.6, I think that's what they told me. That's what they upped it to. Then this calculated damage would be somewhere around 7.5, 7.7, which 7.7 is exactly the same calculated damage that Astralon does on his AoE because Astralon has higher base attack. And then on this single target damage, single target damage for attack based champions usually range from anywhere from six to seven. We said this in the previous video before he even came out. We already said this and I said he'd be somewhere around there and then he's at six, two on this sheet, but they upped it to like six, eight. So the calculated damage will be right over 11. All of this damage, no matter what anybody tells you is standard. 
Is it good damage? Does he hit hard? I only say this because people are always like, oh man, Stu, this guy hits so hard. Yeah, he hits as hard as 90% of the champions in the game. Good job. It's about what they bring to the table and what you're using them for. But as far, far as hitting hard, he hits as hard as everybody else. The best thing that you can use this for is that right now, if you have an Astralon, if you have whoever you have your best gear on, if they're an attack-based champion, look at the damage they're doing, the calculated damage in this sheet. You can compare it to his calculated damage, and you don't even have to swap your gear over to him, and you'll know exactly what kind of damage you're doing. So if you have Astralon right now with your best gear doing his AoE move, you're like, okay, I like that damage. It's good. Well, you know now if you put that same gear on this guy, Alex, that's the damage you're going to get. Nothing special, nothing surprising. That's the damage. Now that we know all that, let's see what Alex can actually do for us. And again, for anybody starting out in this game, he is so amazing. I'm going to be increasing and decreasing the speed of this video as we go through it on the fly. So you might hear my keyboard. That way I can slow it down and speed it up because I'm playing back some footage I took. I'm going to slow this down in the beginning so that we can see him do his AOE ability. We've got increased attack, AOE ability, one point. 197,000 was the hardest hitting one, and I know that was a Helm Smasher proc. So pretty good there. This is Dragon 24. And you've always got that Crimson Helm with insane defense staying alive like crazy. So we came in there with Lydia. We get decreased defense, weaken. We've got our increased attack from the Fnatic over here, a rare champion. We've got increased critical damage from our Archmage Helmet. Good team comp, good team synergy all around, and we're getting hard hits also from our Dark Kale which we don't necessarily need. Let me speed it up a little bit more. Actually, we'll stay here. I want to see him do his freeze. And I want to see that hard hitting ability on his A3, which we'll see when we go up to the dragon. Good damage, good damage on that AOE. But again, that's good damage that, I don't know, 80 to 90% of everybody in the game does. What we're taking advantage of is that accuracy lead and that decreased defense. We're doubling up, though, because we've already got somebody else giving us that decreased defense. But we don't need to bring Lydia in. We could just use him. And that's what you're going to do on a beginning of your account. On a brand new account that you're starting out on, you're going to use him for your decreased defense. You're going to use him for that freeze on the A1. And you're definitely going to use him for that accuracy lead. Let's see if we can see some big hits on both of these champions. I'm going to speed it up to normal speed now. That is the AoE. We did not hit Helm Smasher. 52,000 was hardly nothing. And there wasn't any decreased defense up. So it wasn't a lot there. That was the A1. Dark Kale's coming in with very comparable damage. 100,000 there on that hit. If you add up everything Dark Kale does, you'll see the damage is pretty comparable. Much lower because I don't even think Dark Kale's multipliers are as high and his attack is much lower. And Dark Kale doesn't have a single target hard hitting ability. His A3 just puts up poisons. It doesn't do damage. Puts up the poison and then also puts up the poison sensitivity. So for this run on 24, we had to do 24 because 25 is force affinity for dragon. And we're running a whole, we're running all magic affinity champions. We can't do that. This is not a bad run. We're going to roll this. Let's go faster, faster, faster. Under two minutes. Can we do it? Under two minutes. Let's look at this damage. So we got Dark Kale coming in at 2.1 million. Alex coming in behind me at 2.8 million. So Alex was putting in some work. I don't think Dark Kale got to take advantage of his poisons really. So Alex really took it away in this one, in this battle against Dark Kale and Alex. But they all serve their purpose. Dark Kale's in there to get poisons up, do decrease attack, which saves the whole entire team. If we didn't have decrease attack, we'd be dead. The dragon would have killed a lot of these guys off by then already. So he's doing what he needs to do. Alex is doing his job with everything that we already explained. So good team synergy. Let's go over to Ice Golem and see what we can get done. Here on Ice Golem, I'm going to take out the Fnatic that was giving us the increased attack, and I'm going to put in Doom Priest. She's going to help us remove any debuffs, give us some heals, and then also give us the increased attack of 50%. Going through these waves is really hairy. <laughs> you know how it is. This is stage 25 of Ice Golem. Not only is the battle at the Ice Golem hairy, if you don't have it set up properly and you don't have backups in case you get hit at an inopportune time, Going through here on the second wave, we've got Archmage Helmet to stun them. That's what we want. We want everybody to, you know, decrease attack. Sure, with Kale, we want our Alex to, to freeze if we can on that basic ability, the A1. And then we want this, the stun. We got to have that Archmage Helmet come in here and stun them so we don't die. You could die so easily on this wave. There's the freeze from Alex. 
Good job, Alex. Look at that. 50% chance to freeze really is nothing to joke about. And then he's doing his moves, doing his moves. Let's let's go to the boss. Let's see what the boss is all about. And then we'll look at the, the end damage. There we go. Faster, faster. This one does seem to be quite a long battle. I don't know why it's so long. Wave two is... Oh, man. There we go. We're almost at the boss. Now, the boss can get us, but we do have Lydia again in here. We've got Lydia helping us out that way if the boss tries to bring back these side guys and our people are dead, Lydia will bring everyone back to life as long as she's not dead. If she's the one that's dead and we have other people alive, she'll only bring herself back. But if she's here, she'll bring everybody else back. You'll see in a minute. I'm sure you know this already, but I'm just giving you a rundown of what's going to happen. So Alex is doing his job now with the freeze if he can. He's getting in the hard damage. We're not taking advantage of any Ogren or what was Ogren and whatever other faction he, he can do more things with, which is just put up a weaken and then remove buffs before he... That's a good thing too. Don't forget. Don't forget. I shot. I forgot to show you on the dragon. He will remove a buff. So if somebody comes in there, say when we fought, there we go. Our people are back. He tried to revive his guys. And now our guys are back to finish this off. I think Alex is going to die early, but he's putting in work. He's putting in some hard work. The Crimson Helm will put up that unkillable buff on herself. Or block damage, block damage. He could remove that. On his A3, he's going to attack, and then he's going to remove a buff. So it all comes in handy. He's got a good kit. He's got a really good kit. All right, and on this one, Alex did 2.9, almost 3 million. And then this one, Kale caught up because he got to take advantage of all his poisons. So 3.3 .3 on Kale. And then Archmage Helmet, 1 million. Not bad for Archmage. He's not even really built for damage. So that was really good for him. So all in all, this is a very solid champion. So I don't know what kind of videos you're going to watch as you go through and see Alex here from other content creators that he can kill Duchess. I mean, he's got no additional... He's got nothing additional to help him out with Duchess. He's got a single target ability to remove a buff after you hit. It'll only remove buffs before you hit if it's Ogren Tribe and... Damn it. Whatever the other one is, and it's not what Duchess is. It's not Demon Spawn. Even then, reaction accessories and Swift Parry are going to stop you from one-shotting her anyway. So that's like a pipe dream. Don't even worry about that. Can he work for you in Arena? I'm not even going to show you Arena because, again, you know what damage he's going to do on that AoE. All those other champions that you're using right now that are attack-based, that do AoE damage, that's what he's going to do with your best gear. So nothing special. And then he's going to try to apply a decreased defense. And if they're the other tribes, he's going to put that weakened up as well. Or try to if we have enough accuracy for it. Sum everything up. If this guy did not have an accuracy lead, I would say he is total trash. And you're right. He's just got a hitting move here. He's got AOE decreased defense. And we've got a really cool freeze on the A1. But the fact that he has this for all those starting accounts out there, even people in mid game that are struggling to get enough accuracy or accuracy banners from Spider. This guy's amazing. Put him as your lead. Whenever I played a brand new account, and believe me, I've started so many brand new free-to-play accounts. Anytime I got somebody like Frozen Banshee or Pantera, she's a rare Void champion that had an accuracy lead. And we're talking like 30, 35 accuracy lead. I was so happy to have them. And I use them all the time. Now I got a guy I start with with a huge accuracy lead of 60 that can freeze AOE decrease defense, and you do not have to put books into them. If you're not going to put books into them, make sure you come over here and get the Sniper Mastery. Pick that up. And you might want to go over here to Counterattack. I think Counterattack would be really fun with him if he's taking damage. That way we can Counterattack and get a freeze off while you're coming up in the game. Because there's no reason to play him like I did with Helm Smasher. Coming up in the game, you might want to come over here and make it so he can't get crit as hard. So we can Counterattack, get Turn Meter right here on the side. And then get your Sniper Mastery because you're not going to book him. Get over here to your Master Hexer so you can make those debuffs last longer, which would be the decreased defense and the weaken. And then the extra accuracy to make sure you can land all those debuffs. That's my thoughts on him. He is not a ninja. Ninja does hit way harder. He does more things in the game. Ninja is great from beginner to all the way to the end. Speed runs on Dragon, Ninja. Amazing one keys on the clan boss definitely ninja starting out in the game with ninja amazing because you can do aoe freeze you can get this burn up you can do the increased defense on the a1 and then he's got a pretty sweet passive and not only that ninja's abilities change depending on whether you're fighting a boss or not which is really cool so overall of course ninja is a way better 
champion. But this guy, for what we're going to use him for, for I think what they put him out for, just out of nowhere, he's good. So let me know your thoughts down below, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you all in a video soon. <laughs>